This video demonstrates a circumcision performed on a model from Limbs and Things. Initially, we must make sure the reason for circumcision and that the patient is appropriately counselled with regards to the risks of bleeding, infection and altered cosmesis and sensation. We start with routine prep and drape and in this instance use a skin marker. We're checking that we can see the meatus and that there's no other issues, for example, masses or abnormalities on the glands or foreskin. We mark around the glands, ensuring that there's plenty of length for the erect penis and there's not going to be any pain or discomfort on how much skin that we remove. We make a slight V at the frenulum underneath the penis. At this point, it's useful to place two clips onto the foreskin. This allows your assistant to help with retraction. A swab in the left hand allows sharp dissection. Here we are using a 15 blade. With each incision, we try and produce some counter traction with the swab and the clips to allow the plane to open up into Buck's fascia. You can see the small fibres peeling away and it's important to concentrate on these areas. Bipolar diathermy at this stage can be used to deal with vessels as you are proceeding. This is the outer incision. The penis is then altered to allow the frenular incision. At this point, it's possible to incise the frenular artery, which can cause a fair amount of bleeding, which can be controlled with bipolar diathermy. The outer incision is completed, followed by an incision through the foreskin between your two clips. Once the foreskin is then retracted, a betadine swab can be used to clean inside. The inner incision is now performed around 3 mm from the glands. This will become your tissue that you suture to your outer incision. This can be performed with your blade or indeed bipolar scissors. As we know, most circumcisions are performed for balanitis, erotica, obliterans, and it is vitally important to check that the meatus is healthy. We can see the two layers of the inner and outer incisions now, and these are the layers that need closing. The first suture is placed on the dorsal aspect. We are using 3O Vicral Rapide in an interrupted fashion in instrument tying. This suture is left relatively long so that a clip can be placed by your assistant and this will help in further suturing. The penis is angled cranially to allow your frenular suture. This is performed as what we call as a box suture where the initial bite is taken on the lower aspect, sutured onto the inner incision line, and the needle is then turned to make a C shape, and the inner incision line is picked up, followed by the outer skin. This is then tied and again left long to allow a clip to be placed, again to aid with your further sutures. In between closing the skin, it's essential that good hemostasis is performed using bipolar diathermy throughout box fascia to ensure there's no bleeding veins. At 
As you can see here, the penis can then be angled to aid with your sutures. It is important to ensure that you get a good bite of both sides of the tissue and that none of the skin is rolling under. The areas are generally halved and roughly six sutures placed on either side. Your assistant will need to cut your sutures and aid with traction. Again, we instrument tie to try and save on suture length. It is possible to perform a subcuticular continuous suture. However, we prefer this method. Again, if there's any signs of infection, the suture line will not open up. It's possible on completion to use some chloramphenicol ointment and gauze dressing. Both sutures are, are cut at this point. It's a good idea to place some gelinette on to prevent the gauze from sticking. This can be held in place with a small piece of tape. The foreskin is only sent for pathology if abnormal.